Bang! Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency and blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, look. There's going to be swearing. There's going to be smoking. There's going to be drinking on here. If you don't like those things, leave now because here I come in three, two, one. Bang! Welcome, everyone. My name is Shamar Clark. Welcome to Bang! Cryptocurrency Blockchain News. All right, brothers. Hello and welcome. <laughs> welcome, brothers. Holy, so the market is so sweet. Um, we went up to three nine. Now we're at three nine. Wait, sorry, my bad. Four nine. Are well, we're gonna look right now. So, so let's just do this in order. Sorry, I'm still so excited from last night. Some of you, some of you, Dino made some gifts of me. <laughs> so I'm gonna show those gifts tonight. Obviously, when we get to shoutouts and airdrops. Um, obviously, thanks for sticking around last night. I know it was an hour and twenty four minute show. My brain got blown, man. Honestly, if I was more fueled, that would have been like a three, four hour show. I wouldn't have stopped talking. <laughs> so, well, why don't you stop talking now and just get on with the show, motherfucker? All right, well, let's do it then, brothers. Look, guys, uh, so Coinbase, so we talked about this before, um, the importance of insurance in the cryptocurrency market. I mean, um, you know, it, it, hedge funds aren't going to, wow. Yeah, they have to have insurance, right? And so, um, anyway, Coinbase is offering crypto insurance and so uh, and it's by a reputable anyway so we'll talk about that all right a big reputable company is doing it and uh that's the kind of stuff we need we talked about it a couple times last year but we're gonna talk about it again now and so you know the whole talk of the day was just the big price yesterday so there wasn't really any crypto news like you know no main nets or no upgrades or any kind of things like that so so we're gonna talk about banks funds and brokers are all talking crypto today and we're going to talk about that and then and then so and then remember last night i was like fuck what is doing this man i'm gonna find out and so honestly i didn't find out um nothing definitive i have a theory so i'm gonna give my two cents but these guys also have theories and so we're gonna talk about the crypto community speculates on bitcoin rally so we're gonna a little speculation at the end of the show. And then I'm also going to give you my... Hold on, let me make sure I give you my opinion. And then I'm going to give you what I think happened last night. All right, my opinion. Make sure to give you guys that. All right, good. So let's begin how we begin, brothers. We start out with a little bang. And then we... Oh, I hope this... Hold on. I hope this refresh doesn't fuck up my brain again. Let's see. So we're at 4924. Let's refresh, brothers. Four nine five two. All right. So nicely, we're consolidating right here under five. Right here under five. All right. All right. Great, brothers. So top ten of the day, brothers. Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin, EOS, Bitcoin Cash, Binance Coin, Stellar Cardano, and Bang Tether. Oh, Cardano took over Tether at number up to number nine. Okay, great. Um, so well, oh, look at Bitcoin Cash, forty two percent up. All right, so let's look at uh, market moves of the day, brothers. Uh, well, I mean, for the regular, it's, well, just single to double digits up. <laughs> let's just say single to double digits. Let's not range it. Single to double digits up. Single to double digits up. Single digits to double digits up. Single digits to double digits up. Okay, let's look at who lost money today. Let's see what's on sale. If anything, yeah, not much of a sale at all. All right, top 10 loser of the day. Ravencoin, ABBC Coin, Maker, PundiX, IOST, Insight Chain, TrueUSD, Tether, Paxo Standard, and USD Coin. Now, let's see who made money today. Bang! Yes. Augur? Augur? Hmm. Someone said there was some sort of thing where auger is getting hacked or something anyway, anyway that's whatever anyways let's just report on what's reporting so top 10 earners of the day auger bitcoin cash metaverse etp bitcoin sv dogecoin ttc protocol litecoin nem bitcoin diamond aeon and cardano all right oh let's look and see what the market cap is 172 billion market cap bye Holy shit. Hold on. Were we just... Wait. Fuck off. That's crazy. So, hold on to me. Hold on. I got to go back one page, guys. Sorry, I clicked something by accident there. Look at the fucking volume today. 
Hold on. Let's go. All right. Fuck it. We'll do it from here. 79 billion. All right. Here we go again. Bang. What was that? 50 something. Oh, I told you I'd write it down. Yes, I wrote that shit down. Exactly. We were at 50.8 billion when I wrote it down. Actually, then remember to write these things down. We're now at 79.8. Wow. So, we, wow. Another 20 billion gain of volume from the 20 billion gain, you know, from the from last, anyways, 60, wait. A $50 billion gain from last Friday, which was 30 billion, wasn't it? And then last night was 50.8 billion. And tonight we're at 79 billion. Point eight billion dollars. Wow. So there is mad volume. Volume means interest. And actually, I'm going to read. That's one of the stories right here. I'm going to read to you. The banks, the funds, the brokers are all talking crypto. All right, brothers, let's get on with some stories. Bye. All right. Two hundred fifty five million dollars. Coinbase confirms extent of crypto insurance coverage. So I didn't really read this story. I already know about insurance coverage. So I didn't really read it, but. Um, so, uh, well, I'll tell you what that means for us here in America. So, how it works here in America is anytime you have some sort of, um, you know, bank account kind of thing, it, it's FDIC insured. So, that's our federal department, wait, federal something insurance corporation, right? It, oh, federal depository insurance corporation. So, any American, any bank account we have, any sort of account where you've got money, it's insured up to $250,000, right? $250,000. So, obviously, if you have less than two fifty, dollars and if your bank burns down or goes bankrupt or whatever, all right, fine, you're going to get your money back. Um, anything over that, well, you lose that difference, right? And so, anyways, so what's important for here, though, is, well, these guys don't have 250 Gs, these institutional investors. You know, they have like 250 Bs, <laughs> billions. Some, right? Not all, of course, but, you know, just for the fun of the story. $250 billion, so you have to have insurance to cover that. And so so we read about Gemini. Remember Gemini last summer? No, no, sorry. That wasn't last summer. That was like last October. Announced that they had, oh, I don't even remember. It was, I think it was unlimited, unlimited insurance. And so it looks like Coinbase here, well, they're saying 250, 50 million. Sorry, 255 million. Tell you the truth, that's not very much. That's not very much. So I'm not going to bullshit you, but let's read it. It is what it is. So we got to read the news. All right. Um, hold on, actually. <sighs> hold on a second, guys. All right. Um, all right, let's go. Coinbase has revealed the details of its insurance arrangements for cryptocurrency held on customers' behalf, a rare move in an opaque market. In a blog post published Tuesday, Philip Martin, the exchange's vice president of security, confirmed that it is covered for up to 250 50, 250 50, why do I keep saying that? 255 million for coins held in so-called hot wallets. In other words, assets which are essentially online and open to potential hacks. Okay, so I get it. Um, Coindesk first reported, Coindesk first reported in November that Coinbase's coverage was in this ballpark. San Francisco Coinbase holds less than two percent of its customers' assets in hot, hot wallets, with the remaining ninety-eight percent at arm's length um, from third-party attacks in cold storage, where the private keys are offline. The company told Coindesk. Um, at its height during the crypto bull market, the company stored $25 billion worth of assets on customers' behalf, but the company would not provide a recent figure. So they're not telling anyone how much they own or holding now. Um, this policy was placed by Lloyd's. So the, the insurance policy was by Lloyd's of London. Uh, registered broker. Oh, wait. Oh, by a Lloyd's registered broker. Okay, I see. Aon. And sourced from a global group of U.S. and U.K. insurance companies. Exactly. Lloyd's is... Oh, here it is. Yeah, including certain Lloyds of London, London syndicates. Uh, Martin's, blog post, Martin's blog post said uh, he did not name the individual underwriters. All right. So Lloyds, which gathers under one roof a range of specialist insurance markets, 
dealing with everything from crime and cyber attacks to natural disasters, is viewed as a seal of approval when it comes to underwriting potential losses of crypto assets. Exactly. Lloyd's last year, they were underwriting um, a bunch of a bunch of um, crypto exchanges in, um, in, in the UK. They're a UK company. Well, it's called Lloyd's of London, literally. Um, yeah, and they were keeping it quiet. They were keeping it quiet because they, for some reason, they didn't want some of their other clients to know that they were insuring crypto cryptocurrencies cryptocurrency companies blockchain services companies right they didn't they didn't want them to know that for some reason i mean i didn't know it didn't say why the thing i read didn't say why it just said you know we're keeping it quiet um all right so previously secretive about publicizing anything about insurance of digital assets Lloyd's is steadily becoming more visible for a certain class of crypto customers, at least. All right. For instance, last month, security specialist BitGo trumpeted $100 million of coverage for crypto held in cold storage and went as far as naming the lead Lloyd's underwriter of the policy. Uh, in fact, much of Martin's post could be read as a veiled dig at BitGo since he talks about recent nudes and announcements around crypto insurance, suggesting a lot of confusion still exists. He then advises firms to focus on hot wallet coverage as opposed to cold storage where value is at rest and therefore not so much at risk. Um, regarding Coinbase's blog post, Clarissa Howowitz, VP manager at BitGo, told Coindesk via email, we're glad to see that Coinbase is following our lead in bringing more transparency to the discussion of insurance for digital assets. Insurance is complex and transparency is essential for building trust that's it all right and then all this shit right here this is just a bunch of bullshit like the different types of insurance like whatever man we don't give a fuck i mean you're never going to use it i'm never going to use it so who gives a shit looking ahead oops martin pointed to the disconnect given that policies are denominated in fiat but the assets are in crypto this means that in bull markets, it can be challenging for companies looking to grow insurance policy limits at the same pace as asset prices are moving. The solution, he said, would be insurers holding digital assets in order to offer policy limits denominated in cryptocurrency to avoid differences in valuation. In addition, policies are generally written to exchanges or custodians, not directly to the owners of the cryptocurrency. Uh, we need a world where the ultimate owners of cryptocurrency are able to directly insure their assets stored with trustworthy, well-reviewed, transparent service providers. So I guess they want retailers to be able to get crypto insurance. Despite improvements in understanding on behalf of insurers and brokers, there's still not enough capacity in the market. Yeah, it just started. Coinbase asserted, oh, Coinbase asserted, um, in the case of some larger crypto exchanges, this lack has been plugged by simply setting aside thousands of Bitcoin in case of a hack. Yeah, just to pay the people back, right? Uh, the demand for cryptocurrency insurance has increased faster than new entrants coming in, noted Martin, concluding, we need more participants in this market. Yeah, you know, these insurance guys don't really want to insure it. But uh, look, people need it. And uh, so they need more participants in the market. So that is what helps, you know, bring institutional investors like the, the Gemini thing, the Winklevoss kids, yeah, man, they have unlimited insurance. Yeah, man, if you're, if you're a $200 billion hedge fund and it's for some reason, somehow, by some miracle, Gemini gets hacked and you lose all your stuff, pff, no problem. No problem. Gemini's got you covered. You get all your money back forthwith. So that's why it's important, guys. And well, this was kind of interesting. They were talking about, it sounded like near at the end right there, they were talking about individuals having crypto insurance. Yeah, I don't see why not, right? All right. So, next story, brothers. From banks to funds to brokers, everyone outside of crypto is talking Bitcoin today. It is. After yesterday, after yesterday, All right. After Bitcoin's meteoric rise, 
um, to its all-time high price of twenty grand, twenty thousand. Back in December two thousand seventeen, the first ever cryptocurrency has given investors, traders, and mainstream media more than enough reason to criticize the crypto, call it a bubble, and point to severe losses as reasons why the asset would die a slow death. It has caused many to write off the asset entirely. And much of the hype surrounding crypto and blockchain has since faded. However, following an extremely powerful rally in Bitcoin last night, the king of cryptocurrencies has the entire world talking again. Damn right they are. From banks to funds to family offices to brokers and more. With Bitcoin price back in the limelight, the resurgence in interest could send the price of the leading crypto by market cap back into the stratosphere. Oh, it will. Never underestimate the power of mainstream media. Oh, Bitcoin making headlines over major media announcements. All right. Uh, outlets once again. All right. Never underestimate the power of mainstream media. Headlines influence behavior and decision making. And the constant headlines of Bitcoin price reaching new heights in 2017 took the world by storm. But since then, it's been a rocky road and a long, arduous bear market. Has beaten and battered even the most hardcore Bitcoin bulls. Not my folks. Enthusiasm surrounding Bitcoin has also but vanished from the crypto market. However, a recent overnight rally that broke important resistance levels has the entire world outside of the cryptocurrency space talking about BTC for the first time since its highly publicized parabolic advance and could help it reclaim its fame. <clears throat> um, yeah, and so this guy says it's all everyone's talking about it. So according to New York, according to New York based trader and economist Alex Kruger, Everybody outside of crypto is talking about Bitcoin today. From banks to funds to family offices to brokers, he added. A quick Google search backs up these claims. And every major mainstream media outlet from Bloomberg to New York Times to Wall Street Journal to Yahoo Finance and even publications in between features headlines on Bitcoin. Even tech sites such as Gizmodo are reporting on the massive Bitcoin rally to 4,800. Twitter and other social media platforms are also echoing talk about Bitcoin's powerful surge. Media Blitz could kick off a new crypto bull run. The headlines are becoming the subject for water cooler talk amongst investors and traders everywhere. The same public that watched as Bitcoin skyrocketed to 20 grand are now learning that Bitcoin broke through downtrend resistance that could signal the bear market is over and a new bull run could begin. <clears throat> smart money has been and will continue to accumulate Bitcoin at these low prices. Exactly. Get your large caps. Get your large caps. As Bitcoin continues to rise from here, each time it breaks through major price levels, it'll make even more headlines. Exactly. I agree 100% with this fucker right here. As awareness about the first ever cryptocurrency is far higher than the previous bull cycle. The renewed interest combined with familiarity and a surge in both price and media attention could be enough to bring Bitcoin price to all new highs. It's just a matter of time. Oh, it will go to all new highs. And it is just a matter of time, brothers. Just a matter of time. So that's just, uh, I brought that up just to show you. After last night's bull run, well, it's not a bull run. After last night's surge in price, <laughs> a bull run is something that lasts a while. After um, last night's surge in price, back in the media again, back in the media again. And that's awesome. That is awesome. That'll bring, well, new retail money. You know what I mean? And plus, when, and like I told you guys, like, you guys know, you know, I read Bloomberg. I read Wall Street Journal and shit. You know what I mean? Those are real newspapers, <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, with actual, you know, details, lots of details, right? And they're saying here, when he said here, what? Bloomberg, New York Times, Wall Street Journal talking, Yahoo Finance? Yeah, well, what do, you know, CEOs read the Wall Street Journal, right? That's what CEOs read. Right, they read the New York Times, they read Bloomberg. Hell, they have Bloomberg probably on in their office on a TV screen, right? Playing all the time, right? I do that. That's what I have. My my Bloomberg is on all the time, and so yeah. So the, what I'm saying is so awesome that the big boys are getting to read about it now, and and also you know now that the regular media is also talking, your average soccer mom and soccer dad. Or, you know, middle class people with disposable income. But you're going to maybe think twice. Maybe think twice. Shit, why not? It was just at 3,100 what? What was that, a month and a half ago? We're at five? 
let's just call it five. I know it's four nine. You're not a five point. I know. Settle down. All right. So that's a two thousand dollar gain in you know what two months, thousand bucks a month. All right. So brothers, look. And so we're gonna just stay with sort of speculation and talk like this. So the crypto community speculates on what triple trickler triggered the massive Bitcoin price rally. And so that's all this is, is speculation. I'm going to give you, so my opinion is, well, I'll tell you my opinion at the end. But let's go through a, a couple of, uh, oh, well, I'm going to tell you this one. Wait, is it in this article? Wait, all right, all right. So I'll tell you one one theory I heard was that that money came from South America, uh, South Korea or Japan, but there wasn't anything else about it. Like, so that's, you know, they didn't say anything about it. You know, there's no proof. You know, well, this wallet did this or that wallet did that and that wallet's located. You know what I mean? So that was one speculation. So let's check it out. Let's speculate a little bit. I don't give a fuck what it did. It, as long as it just keeps doing it. <laughs> I do care why. Like I told you, I'm a Forex trader. Whenever you see craziness, you always want to investigate. So the majority of 2019 has been a nail by the crypto market participants as investors, traders, and analysts alike. Watched and waited for signs the elusive Bitcoin price bottom may be in. I think that was it. 3-1 was it. And we are gone now. We are taking off. Uh, overnight, last night, a massive rally occurred. <laughs> Freaked me out. Taking the price of Bitcoin through strong resistance at 4-2. Remember, remember when I was saying, I was like, yeah, yeah, guys. You know, if we if we see, keep ranging between 3-9 and 4-1, you know, then bump up there between... You know, four, four, one, and four, three, right? I was not. Ex I was expecting sort of two hundred dollar increment moves, until I'm not gonna lie. Until major stuff started happening, like till major, you know, stuff. I mean, major stuff did just happen, but I mean, do you know what I'm trying to say? But like I told you guys, I'm a. I've told you this before. I'm a conservative investor, so yeah. Uh, slow money is better than no money. So look, following the move. The entire crypto community is speculating on what caused the enormous price spike and if the rally signals the end of the bear market. That's right. Are we going to hold this price or what? Crypto community conflicted over what sparked the Bitcoin price rally. Bitcoin is the king of all speculative assets, and those that trade or invest in the cryptocurrency often speculate over the smallest details. <laughs> sure, that's right, they do. When such a large movement occurs on Bitcoin charts, everyone starts talking and speculating on what the reasons were behind a rally. Uh, the reasons is called more demand, fucker. <laughs> That's the only thing that makes something go up. But I get what they're trying to say. Uh, with such a large rally following over a year of downtrend, the crypto community is buzzing more than usual. Pfft, buzzing like a motherfucker. Trying to figure out what was the fuel behind the powerful upward movement. Exactly. Who did that? So, so here we begin with the first one. So... <laughs> So the first one, and this this is a big uh, this is a big rumor actually. Bloomberg said this, which is weird. Major media powerhouse Bloomberg believes that the rally may have been triggered by an April Fool's Day joke, suggesting that a Bitcoin ETF had been approved by the Securities and Exchange Commission. And then here's the report here. If you guys want to read the report, you guys know I uh, I post the links. To every story in the description of the video on YouTube. So you can just come back and read it. Um, the idea is that CPU-based algorithmic trading bots picked up on the news and started buying the asset en masse near important resistance levels, breaking it and triggering a cascade of stop losses. So <laughs> they're saying dudes were shorting. Right. And so they have their stops, you know, they're 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 going to go short and they have their stops up here, right? But these bots, this is the theory of this guy's thing is that the bots yeah blew through resistance and then what, what in the in the trading world we call it stop hunting so you go stop hunting um if enough boys get together and say an asset is going down well we know that the stops are you know obviously above price right like so say it's to go short yeah the guy's stop is up here and then there's other guys with stops all the way up so you go stop hunting and you jack the price up so you blow their trades so they're out and that drives price higher and then you blow those other guys stops so they're out so you just it's just google like stop hunting 
Um, and so I guess what they're saying, and so these, you know, right now they have these computers that are doing the trading for these guys. And what part of what these guys do is they make the computer read news headlines. So say a news headline comes out and says, uh, uh, I don't know, Saudi Arabia to increase oil production this month. Yeah, the computer actually reads that and it, it understands what that means. So that means obviously if Saudi Arabia is going to increase production, that means the price of oil will go down. So the computers automatically kick in their algorithm. You can see it's right there. And they'll short oil. And so what this guy's theory is, is that someone bullshitted about, uh, made a made a, an April Fool's joke about ETF being approved while the, the, the bots read it and... Well, they started going along Bitcoin, right? Because that's what they're told to do. That's his theory, okay? So that's one theory. Um, so altcoin trade pairs get short squeezed. This is a bunch of bullshit, so we're not going to read that one. I'm already telling you that's bullshit, so that's not even worth reading to you. And uh, and here it is. This one, this is a bunch of nonsense too, but it is going to be scarce. I've told you about scarcity, but that's not what happened yesterday. But let's read it anyway. In a recent report, one, one, one economist claimed that Bitcoin was the fastest and highest rising asset ever. Why is this shit moving? And then the crypto specifically designed sc scarcity is the reason for its ability to climb so quickly. It is. Watch. I told you guys, there's only, there's not enough of them. When they start pumping out, when Fidelity starts pumping out 401ks, retirement funds and everything, and when companies around the world are do, start doing that, that's why they're going to be something rich people have. They're... They're going to be, you know, it's just the greatest store of value ever. I think. We'll see. I'm pretty sure I'm right. So the scarcity is also being pointed out as a potential trigger for the current rally. The truth behind the rally is likely a combination of all those possible potential reasons, with each claim offering some validity. Altcoins have indeed been on a profit-generating kick, and Bitcoin supply has been gobbled up by smart money accumulating at what is in what, in hindsight, may be the crypto bear market bottom. Well, it's true. I mean, they are OTCing in the behinds, behind the scene, but that still doesn't affect the price. So those are some speculations. So would you speculate? So my speculation about what happened is, if you notice that that bull run, not a bull run, what am I saying? That little rally right there, it started um, at around, two, around 3 a.m., right? Well, 3 a.m., that's when I start trading right now. Actually, it's 3.43. And that is nine o'clock London time. So that's Western Europe. And what I think is, I think that some sort of hedge fund or group of hedge funds or something are on some sort of exchange. And that exchange came online yesterday. And so all those whales just started trading, right? I don't think the 20 billion is from one fund at all. I think you know, like right now, backed. We have backed here, right? I remember backed said that when they start, they said they have already onboarded all these all these funds, right? All these big players, and so I think the same thing happened yesterday. I think there was some sort of exchange out there in Europe or somewhere in that time zone. Could have been in Africa. Who knows? Could be South Africa for all we know. But when the trading day started, they came online, and the whales got to have at it is what I think, and so, yeah, just like when Bact comes online here, yeah, what's gonna happen that day? Boom, we're gonna see a blast in pricing, right? Because all of the all of the institutional investors that Bact has already onboarded, yeah, they're chomping at the bit, so as soon as it, the trading goes live, boom, they're gonna be in. And I think, I think that's what happened. Somewhere in the Western European time zone, some exchange, came online and their whales got released that's my personal thing all right guys let's get the shout outs and airdrops bang oh and there's some funny shout outs tonight <laughs> dino he, he all right let's see look he made a, a gif out of me hold on let's let's do this properly though so look look poppy would love you brother bang i'm sitting at the bar after hours and literally just started busting up Bye. Okay. <laughs> nice. And uh, all right. 
what? All right, hold on. First of all, son of a bitch. Bang, bang, bang. Airdrop, I love you, brother. Bang. What does he say, though? That's reality hitting right there. And maybe a bit caring about... And maybe a bit caring about the neighbors. Because <laughs> you know what Dino did? Watch this. He made this gif of me. Right? So this is when I saw the price. And so <laughs> Ronkis is saying, you know, you freaked out. And then maybe you're like caring about the neighbors here. <laughs> there wasn't much caring about neighbors last night. I'm not going to lie. But look at my. Oh, so we'll get there when we get there, guys. He made all sorts of gifts out of me. In the past hour, like just before I started this, he was uploading these. All right. Uh, and so here's Dino. Bang. Love you, brother. Thank you for the gifts. DP Entertainment. Bang. See you, brother. I've never been a gift before. That's hilarious. So this is what he made. Wait, where is it? Bang. Bang. <laughs> and here's it again. Bang. <laughs> and so... So he put this, and so I retweeted, and I said, what did I say? When your crypto rises more than you expect, <laughs> was my uh, little tweet. Yeah, there it is, when I saw the price. Bumba clat. That was fucked up. King Kong, Bitcoin, bang. Yes, Bitcoin Kong. All right. So Jillar, Bang. XRP, Jesus, Patriot Actor. All right, bang, see you, girl. We got, there's Dino again. Bang, another one. Crypto Carlito, bang, see you, brother. Kyla, J. Oliver, bang, see you, girl. <laughs> she said her and her, her mom were crying when I started crying last night. <laughs> bang. All right, tears of joy, brothers. Tears of joy. Biniam Gazai, bang, see you, brother. Bang, there's Kong again. I noticed Kong, you changed your thing now. You got a V-chain. You had the stellar one there. Yes. All right. All right, just a couple more, and then we'll get out of here. Xena. I actually got a trade tonight. I've been a little lame. Xena, see you, girl. Bang. Edwin, brother. Bang. All right. Oh, so here's Kyla right here. She said, you're too much. I am so ecstatic today. Lots of wonderful news. I love to party with you, Shamari. We will, girl. Don't you worry about it. Also, you shed a tear of joy that had me and my mother crying. Bang, bang. Top 100 since March 2018. Does that mean you've been a, you were one of my top 100 subscribers since back last year? Is that what you're trying to say? Bang, girl. Why didn't you ever talk before? I know a lot of you guys watch, but no one, you know, people don't always have time to talk. So I understand. And one more, Trenton. Bang. See you, brother. All right, guys. So bang and bang. Let's get you back to your wives. Bang. And here I am and lives. All right, guys. So, yeah, we've had, fuck, we've been, <laughs> this is such a good week. It's such a good time, guys. If you didn't believe me before, get those large caps and just get everything. Fuck it. Just all of it. <laughs> just all of it. If it's working and it's generating revenue, get it. Fuck it. It's time. It is time. It's time. So what I want to see, let's just see, like, are we going to break five in a, in a minute or are we going to just consolidate around here? Even if we went back down to four, 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 five or something, that wouldn't surprise me and I'd feel fine with that. As long as we don't get into the threes, we're gone. We're done. That psh, we're, we're, psh, we're on the way up. So guys, we had a good show today. Crypto. Uh, Coinbase crypto insurance, important. Institutional investors need to know their money's insured, and then they'll bring it to us. So great, banks, funds, and everyone talking about crypto. Mainstream media talking about crypto after yesterday. Bye. And you know the speculation. Like I told you, I think it was some sort of, um, I think some sort of exchange or something that had some some whales already lined up came online yesterday, and so all those whales jumped in. All right, first first come first serve. And that's what I think. So, no, that's it, guys. So let's chill and kill it, and I'll see you tomorrow. So, bang, subscribe below, press the bell, so you get automatic updates. And, uh, guys, I love doing this for you. It's my favorite time of the day. Oh, oh shit, Poppywood. I was going to say, fuck, I forgot this thing. Poppywood asked me. Hold on to me. All right, guys, listen. One of our brothers, Poppywood. All right, there's a Halo social meetup. Halo social meetup, Halo. 
Pre-sale starts at midnight. I guess that was last midnight. Oh, and so there it is. So Google Halo Social Meetup. Could you mention Halo Social Meetup token is on pre-sale? All right, so Halo Social Meetup. Well, Halo Social token is now on pre-sale, guys. Um, and this is Poppywood's friend who, uh, who built this app. So, hell, I'll, you know, I'll try to help out if I can. Bang, so, all right, so there you go. Now let's get you back to your wives and lives. All right, I almost forgot there. All right, all right, guys, so subscribe below, press the bell. This is my favorite time of the day. Love doing it for you. Bang, my name is Shamar Clark. Look, look, I love doing this. I love talking money, love talking crypto. Yeah, so we'll be doing this for a while. We'll be getting rich. Oh, and that's what I wanted to say. Shamar, remember, you know, I tell you guys, yeah, we're getting, you're going to get rich. You're going to get rich. How do you know you're going to get rich, Shamar? How the fuck do you know? Yesterday was the perfect example. Only $20 billion caused all that. Bang! Dudes, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars coming into this market through these institutional investors. I used to tell you last year, you can't stuff all that money that's about to come into a tiny little... Let's take a look. I know. I know. You're going to get back to your wives and lives. Just hold on. Right? You can't stuff all that money, hundreds of billions into something that's only a hundred billion. Well, 172 billion. Let's do a refresh. Let's see what the what just since we're here now. Let's see what the what it is now, the volume. All right, still at 79.8. All right, but yeah. Yeah, that's what twenty billion dollars did. When the hundreds come, brothers, luck, luck. That's why when I say you're gonna be rich, I point at you and I say that, I mean that shit. That's not a joke. I'm not just saying this so you watch my channel or some shit. You guys know me. I don't give a fuck. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? I don't bullshit around here. So, all right, guys. Got, guys, look. And that's why, though. So I want you to remember, that's why you're going to be rich. Because that was $20 billion yesterday. There are hundreds of billions all on the way. Get ready. Strap yourselves in. All right, guys. Back. Shamar Clark. Love doing this for you. It's my favorite time of the day. Look, look. It's Shamar Clark. I'm always on duty. Bang. Over and out.